it's happening. After months of testing, anticipation, and fine-tuning, SpaceX has rolled out Starship Flight 11 to the launch pad at Starbase, Texas. The massive 400-foot-tall rocket, gleaming under the South Texas sun, is stacked with the flight-proven Super Heavy Booster 15 and the newly upgraded Ship 38, both of which mark the pinnacle of SpaceX's iterative design evolution so far. With road closures in effect, static fire tests complete, and FAA activity notices issued, all signs point toward a launch attempt as early as October 13, 2025, pending final regulatory approval and weather conditions. This flight will mark not just another test, but a turning point, the closing chapter of the Block 2 Starship era before the introduction of the even more advanced Block 3 series. Booster 15 and Ship 38 are not new to the game, they are veterans of SpaceX's relentless test campaign. Booster 15 is a battle-tested behemoth that previously flew on Flight 8 earlier this year, and 24 of its 33 Raptor 2 engines have already seen the vacuum of space. Over the past few weeks, the integrated stack cleared every major milestone, from cryogenic proofing to wet dress rehearsals and a full 33-engine static fire, confirming the vehicle is ready for flight from Pad 1A. This launch may also be the final one conducted from this specific pad before SpaceX temporarily upgrades infrastructure for higher launch cadence and advanced catch operations. Flight 10 laid the groundwork for what's coming, that mission achieved orbit of velocity, demonstrated a flawless stage separation, and made it through a partial re-entry, surviving long enough to provide invaluable thermal and aerodynamic data before losing telemetry near splashdown. Engineers dissected every byte of that data to identify heat shield weaknesses and flap control inefficiencies, and those lessons now shape Flight 11's bold design refinements. Ship 38 is SpaceX's most experimental upper stage yet. It features a next-generation heat shield configuration where specific sections of tiles have been intentionally omitted to expose key structural regions to intense plasma heating. This controlled risk test will simulate real re-entry hotspots, with external temperatures reaching up to 1400 degrees Celsius or 2500 degrees Fahrenheit to measure how the underlying metallic layers perform without full ablative protection. The ship's flaps now incorporate hydraulic and software upgrades that enable quicker reaction times under hypersonic loads, improving attitude stability during the chaotic descent phase. Meanwhile, Booster 15 carries a new titanium-reinforced grid fin setup, lighter and stronger than ever before. These fins will play a key role in maintaining aerodynamic balance during descent, setting up for a controlled splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. The booster's flight profile is also changing. This time, it'll attempt a new multi-phase landing burn, starting with 13 Raptor engines to slow descent, switching to five for a divert maneuver, and finishing with three for hover stabilization. This is the first time SpaceX will test this new throttle-down sequence designed for greater precision and redundancy, a critical rehearsal for when Mechazilla eventually performs live catch operations. At the heart of this flight are SpaceX's Raptor 2 engines, running on methane and liquid oxygen, or methalux, in a full-flow staged combustion cycle, a design so complex that only SpaceX has successfully flown it. Together, Booster 15's engines produce a jaw-dropping 7,500 tons of thrust at liftoff, making Starship the most powerful launch vehicle in human history capable of lifting payloads heavier than 150 commercial jets combined. The mission objectives for Flight 11 are ambitious. Reach orbital velocity again, collect high-resolution re-entry data across unshielded and shielded tile zones, perform an in-space Raptor relight test, simulating future orbital maneuvering, deploy eight Starlink simulator payloads on a suborbital trajectory, which will intentionally re-enter and burn up, validating future satellite deployment mechanisms, and execute controlled booster and ship descents, testing the new flight profile designed for eventual tower recovery. This mission won't include a live Mechazilla catch, but everything about it is designed to pave the way for that future. The flight trajectory will mimic the exact return to pad geometry required for a catch operation, allowing engineers to analyze timing precision, grid fin performance, and guidance algorithm responses in real-world conditions. 
Beyond Texas, SpaceX's attention is shifting eastward. Work is accelerating at Kennedy Space Center's Pad 39A, the same historic pad that launched Apollo 11. Once operational, the Florida facility will enable parallel Starship launches, effectively doubling SpaceX's test cadence. FAA environmental reviews for dual-site operations are already in motion, suggesting that by early 2026, we may see starships launching from both Texas and Florida in rapid succession. The biggest hurdle remains re-entry survivability. At hypersonic speeds, the ship faces plasma temperatures that can exceed the melting point of stainless steel. Ship 38's experimental tile layout will test exactly how much margin the structure can withstand before failure. If it holds, SpaceX will have proof that Starship's design is robust enough for future recovery and reuse. And if it doesn't, that failure will become the blueprint for the next breakthrough. SpaceX's mantra has always been test, fail, learn, repeat. Each Starship flight has embraced that philosophy, from the spectacular belly flop and explosion of SN8 to the controlled orbital success of Flight 10. Every failure has been a step closer to a fully reusable interplanetary launch system. Flight 11's timeline, as of now, points toward a sunrise launch window around 6.15 a.m. Central Time. Stage separation should occur about 2.5 minutes into flight, followed by a brief coasting phase then booster descent and gulf splashdown. Ship 38 will perform its orbital coast, release dummy payloads, execute its Raptor relight test, and then begin its fiery plunge back through Earth's atmosphere. If SpaceX achieves even 80% of its goals on this mission, it would be a defining moment, not just for the company, but for the future of human spaceflight. Because Starship isn't just about Mars, it's about rapid, affordable access to orbit, lunar cargo transport for NASA's Artemis missions, and eventually, mass transportation to other worlds. Every flame, every plume, and every test brings humanity one step closer to that vision. So whether Ship 38 triumphs through the plasma or falls victim to it, Flight 11 will be remembered as another bold leap in SpaceX's unstoppable journey toward making life multiplanetary. The countdown is on. The world is watching. And at Starbase, under the Texas Dawn, Booster 15 and Ship 38 stand ready to write the next chapter of rocket history.